Hey, hello. My name is Mariko. Um, I work for well, work in the team called Web Developer Ecosystem Team, which is inside of Web Platform Team at Google Chrome. And hopefully, at the end of this talk, you will everything makes sense about what why my team is named that way. Anyway, so that's my Twitter handle. If you have any questions, uh, please do tweet at me or DM me. And let's talk about developing a web platform features, or as I like to call it, a massively distributed multiplier engineering. So it's kind of fitting that I get to talk about this topic today, because tomorrow is a Web's 30-year birthday. So this is the first paper that Tim Barton's Lee wrote uh, in 1989, uh, around March. And I think somehow WCBC always celebrates the birthday on March 12, so tomorrow is the birthday. Um, but I would like to start this talk with a little bit of confession. So I've been building a product or projects on the web for more than a decade now, like both from the business and product management side, and then both being a, a coder or the, the person who writes code. But I like, I always bought into this idea of like, web is great, web is open platform, web is the great platform to develop business for. And like, I fully like believe in it, but also sometimes I get lost of like, what even is the web? It's so deep and so like, ah, so much things going on. Like even like the one simple thing, well, to me it's simple because now I kind of get it, but I didn't get the idea that once you write a code and deploy it to the web, then that means that code is being executed on many, many, many different clients uh, like inside of the browser. And those clients are not uniform in shape and size. It's, it's all different. It's all used different, you, uh, different OSs, different uh, browser, different runtime, different screen sizes. And like, as a web developer, you don't get to choose what kind of environment that the user is learning your code in. And that's kind of mind-blowing, and no wonder web development is hard. Uh, well, you can kind of like, limit <laughs> to have like one set of users, but like, we all know this is a bad pattern. This is not how you like, get your users. Like, the users of the web, after 30 years, Expect your code to learn seamlessly on any devices, any screen size, any browser, and that's great. But what makes it possible, even though you don't have to think about million different combinations, what makes it possible to do so relatively easy, I mean, I still admit it's hard, uh, is what's called a web platform. And what is web platform? A platform is in the name of my team name. Um, so I asked a Alex Russell, who is a technical lead for st web standards uh, group inside of Chrome, about like what even is a web platform? And his definition I really like is web platform is a set of interoperably implemented technologies available to developers across web browsers. So Let's visualize a little bit. So web platform, at the bottom, you see a set of features, and you have many variety of browsers. And one features in the web platform are implemented in many different browsers, and thus, it's part of web platform. Sometimes certain browsers have special, awesome, amazing features that on that browser, but if other browsers don't implement it and don't achieve that uh, interoperability, then that's not part of the web platform. Which means developing a feature on the web platform means you're dealing with many engineers from different teams, and it's extremely distributed. And not even the sense of, oh, there's so many engineers all over the world distributed. It, each of them work for different companies, different projects, have different objectives, and not even for like, different browsers. There is many web developers who get involved in building web platform features, other researchers who research on web platforms. So it is, when I say massively distributed multiplayer engineering, it really is massively distributed and massively multiplayer. So like, how objective of here is that even though it is massively distributed and we all work for different companies and do different projects, the objective here is to get 
agreement and then build a feature that lives in many different browsers, right? So I asked Alex Russell again about like, how do you do that? What's the magic sauce? And his first answer was, you just copy each other's bugs. <laughs> so he was uh, explaining that this is the, the old way that they, they were developing the web, they were trying to figure out the web, it was how it was done. But nowadays, the modern way is to go by standards body. And standards body, what I mean, is like W3C, what WZ, Unicode, ITF, ECMA, the things you might have heard of. And basically, you go to those venue and say, I have an idea, and then we all agree, and then write a document called specification. So I asked Alec Russell, OK, so as a browser engineer, which standards do you have to, ooh, that's exciting, do you have to implement? Like, you know, what do you, like, where do you check to make sure that your browser is implementing all of the stuff? And his answer was like, all of them. He didn't give me any answer of like which one it is or anything. Just all of them. And what really meant for him was that the venue or which specification or where that discussion happened is less important. The more important part is that the people got together and came to consensus. So. Doing discussion on standards body does provide benefit of uh, IP protection, the, the intellectual property protections, or legal consultation. But the core of it is that people got together somewhere and agreed on it and came to consensus for the solutions. So, which means that doing the standards-based um, feature development is not about fight. It's not about whose design or whose API is the most elegant specification. It's not about fight, but about coming to the consensus of discussing something, agreeing that there is a problem, and trying to figure out if we can all agree on something to improve the situation. So. Sometimes making consensus means somebody says, mm, it doesn't really work for my situation, the thing you, were, um, you want to input, uh, the, the way you want to do it doesn't really work for my situation, and then you need to come to the conclusion that satisfies both parties. So that got me wonder, working at a browser team, I asked a question to browser engineers like, oh, so I get the principle of things, how does Chromium do this thing? And Chromium has a codified way of doing feature development on the web platform, which is documented in this wiki entry called Launching Features. Um, the, this wiki entry goes into very detail of two, almost to-do list of what needs to happen and who you need to talk to and what's the criteria to move on to next step. But it's really good because it's documented in public and Chromium is an open source project, but it is also powering a browser like Chrome or Opera or many others. Uh, so which means that this can act like kind of like a protecting seal. If somebody comes to one browser and say, hey, I want this special feature because my product is really important, your browser is important, I want this special feature, the web platform team at a Chromium project can say that, like, no, this, this um, wiki, wiki entry is quite extent, uh, extensively, it describes that the interoperability, having other browsers implement the same thing, is really important. So you can say no to special requests. And then also, which means other browsers or other engineers who want to use Chromium project or want to contribute to Chromium can also have a place to look for, OK, in order to start feature development in this project, what's the process that I need to take? And you don't need to search for special rules. So the, the feature like stages can be broken down to four steps. Well, it really is three steps and then the one last goal. Idea, design, experiment, and ship. So the first one is idea, and it's quite simple. I identify the problem and then try to understand what the actual problem is. And in order to do so, you write a document called explainer. The explainer is not a specification document. It is just like a like explainer. <laughs> like It's just a markdown file that says, what the problem is, here's what I want to do, or here's the kind of problem I have, and 
sort of the things that uh, solve things, um, that kind of thing, like research, document what your idea is. And once you have that, then in the Chromium project, it is next step is to send that to the email list called intent to implement. Say, hello, Chromium engineers. I have this idea. Here is my document about problem statement, and I would like to work on it. And then given that like, you know, nobody disagrees massively on like, you should stop that right now, and like, have some kind of consensus about, oh, wait, we should investigate, that moves on to next step, designing. So at this stage, you still do not write specification text. You start designing features. You might think about what kind of API that it should look like, or what kind of surface area should it provide. And you start discussing that in public. So part of discussing in public is creating a entry to Com Platform Status website. Out of curiosity, how many people have seen or know what this website is? Amazing, great. I love this website. I mean, I, I'm biased, like my team makes that website, but like I love this website because you get to see all of the features that's being developed inside of Chrome or the Chromium project. And like what's amazing is like if you really care about one feature, you can click on this bell icon and you subscribe to push notifications. <laughs> so like whenever some uh, updates happen to this entry, which is a link to explainer, links to the history of like what kind of discussion happened, uh, what web developers' uh, reaction is, and what other browsers are thinking, like all of that information is condensed into this one entry, and every time it gets updated, you get push notification. It's amazing. Uh, <laughs> so you make that. Another uh, discussing in public action you do is request a review for tag. Another curiosity, does anybody know what tag is? That's okay, I didn't either until, until like a few months ago. Uh, so tag is a W3C technical architecture group. It's a group of people, pictured in here, uh, elected from the WC members. And they're a collection of people who is uh, a lot involved in standards process, browser vendors, web developers, but who cares about what's happening in the web and who has a general broader view of um, what's, what kind of uh, things are happening on the web ecosystem. So you can bring your idea to tags GitHub repository called design reviews and ask for review. So what it might look like is like, hey, I am developing API blah. Here's my explainer that I wrote, and here's my design documentation that I've been developing. Um, here's a contact person who is interested in working on this. Let me know. What do you think? And then what TAG does is to read those documents and then uh, meet at the meeting, and they provide you feedback of what they think, what the potential uh, load broker might happen in conjunction with other specifications or you know, general feedback. Important thing, no, thing to note is tag is not a gatekeeper. Tag is just a um, reviewer and suggests some edits or suggests some avenues that you might investigate. But tag doesn't decide what gets to be a web platform or not. Tag is not authority to do that. But you get to use those outside um, reviews to iterate your ideas. At this point, you are discussing with collaborators or on your design document, you are asking the view to the tag and then going through that thing and doing that iteration. And once that's done enough, then it finally gets to implementation phase. And it, this one is quite simple. It's just a matter of writing code and writing tests. So in uh, Web Platform has a test suite called Web Platform Test. So in Chromium Project, it's required, if you're developing new feature, you write tests for Web Platform Test as well. And at this point, um, your document might look like officially um, specification text, which use specific language in English that compiles down to either C++ or Last or some other coding language. So, I really think that as a web developer, this phase is really exciting because it's also a, uh, experimentation time, uh, which means you get to test those features in some way. Has anybody heard of the term origin trial? 
Great, I didn't really understand it either six months ago. <laughs> so origin trial, you might have seen our team communicate saying like, hey, this API is coming into origin trial, please test it. What it really means is that the browser engineers did that um, explainer and design phase and then implemented it, and now it's inside of the browser, but it's not available to general public. It is an experimentation phase. And what you can do is you sign up for that experiment. So you sign up to the origin trial with your domain saying, like, hey, I want to use this feature on my website. And then you get the key. And using that key, you get to use those new features that's shipping inside of the browser, but not generally available. Important thing to note, it's not a um, early preview, or it is not like somebody who has a connection to the project gets early access. It is a purely experiment. So the, uh, the way the feature gets to the experiment is, again, over email called intent to experiment. It looks a lot like intent to implement. But um, in there, you have things like goals for this experimentation, what's the timeline looks like, what's the risk that you already know, and what kind of on ongoing discussion that's happening. Really, it's origin trial is about doing like science experiment in the field of the actual shipping browser, and the intent to experiment is the science uh, research planning of what kind of research that you're going to do. And because it is experiment, your key will expire at some point, your experiment will end at some point, and then the, the results will get published saying, like, we run this experiment, here's our findings of you know, developer interest and feedback. And based on that, there might be another design iteration for that API. It might turn out to be good to go and then ship it. But again, iteration happens there. And all of that done, it's time to ship it. In Chromium project, each part of the um, APIs are owned by somebody called API owners, and they are the one in charge of kind of like making sure that the part that they are in charge is good to go. So you need to get three looks good to me from API owners to ship a features. In order to do so, you might guess it, you send an email. <laughs> So you send an email called intent to ship. And again, it looks a lot like intent to implement an experiment. It's just a template of like what the thing is and what kind of uh, consideration that was already done. But then the API owner would reply, OK, you seem like you did the job, and I'm uh, happy with what the result is. Good to go. So timeline-wise, it looks like this. So somebody have an idea and then sends an intent to implement, which means the idea lives in design. If you want to influence the API design or something, this is a great time to get involved. And then the feature gets developed. Some features go through the intent to experiment, some don't. But if they do, then the intent to experiment gets sent out. And then you can use it via origin trial. And this is a great time for web developer to get involved, because you can actually use it in your code and practically get the feedback to the browsers. And then once that's done, intent to ship goes in. And this means that the feature is about to land in the Chrome or the Chromium uh, without any flag or without any uh, behind anything. There's another um, kind of like checkpoint, which is intent to deprecate and remove. So again, if it, the, the feature doesn't get to be part of the web platform, and becomes a special feature for Chromium, that's a technical debt. So at some point, that needs to get removed. So the good example or the recent example of that is a uh, Web Components v0 specs, so like Shadow DOM v0 or Custom Element v0 and things. Like Custom Elements and Web Components specification is shipping, but the version that's shipping is completely different, well, not com like vastly different from the v1 version. So v1 version exists in Chromium and Chrome, needs to get rid of it. So there was an email about intent to deprecate and remove that details all the uh, timeline and process of how to get rid of it from the Chromium project. So how about other browsers? Like I talked a lot about Chromium project. Uh, Firefox used a similar kind of process. Um, they, ha they also have a wiki entry that describes the process. And they do recommend sending intent to implement and intent to ship. So you can look for those signals. Edge use what's called user voice, and it's, have you heard of Edge user voice, and have any of you use it? 
This is also really good. You can go in and then say, I want these features in the uh, Edge. And then you can vote on it. And then apparently Edge team also looks at like how many votes that you get. And then once they start working on it, they get to like they tell you that they are working on it. So this is another way to track what's happening inside of the browser development. It's all confusing, but there's one great Twitter account that aggregates all of that information into one. So it's called Intent to Ship, but uh, it also sends a tweet to whenever that has an intent to experiment, intent to implement, a Safari technology preview, all of like browser development signals is in one place, and I highly, highly recommend subscribing if you're interested in this space. So at this point, you might be thinking, like, you are talking about browser engineers and uh, making uh, new features. As a web developer, isn't there any other way that I can suggest the features without becoming a browser engineer? There is. So a little story about how Service Worker was developed. So Service Worker came from initiative from the web developers. There was an existing specification called Application Cache that let you do offline web app stuff, but it was mm, not optimal. And Jake Archbold, before working for Google and before working on the Service Worker specification, he was a web developer using Application Cache and wrote a blog post called Application Cache is a douchebag. He also gave a really funny conference talk on it and kind of detailed the problem that he had. It was shared, the, the sentiment was shared amongst other web developers. So one, one day, um, a group of engineers got together in the Financial Times conference room, I think, um, and discussed, let's do something about it, what, what does it look like? And out of that was a navigation controller GitHub repo. So they decided to have that discussion in public and put it into GitHub. And this is what eventually um, evolved into Service Worker specification. So if you go to W3C slash Service Worker repo, the specification repo, and look for the second commit, then you find this one, which used to be called navigation controller. The first uh, commit is just like init, having been me, right? So you can see that as a web developer, you can also influence the development of new features. At some point, you need to get browser engineers on board because somebody needs to implement that feature, but you can uh, totally initiate. And you might be thinking, like, well, but like, do I really have to be like famous blogger to influence this thing? Do I have to know people to call for the meeting? You don't have to. There is other venue too. So if you have some idea, a great place to start is a web incubator community group or the YCZ. And YCZ is basically a community group to host incubation of ideas. So you can see all of the API stats being in the incubation here. And it's as easy to start as a sending, a, starting a thread on Discourse. They have Discourse, and you can go in and say, hey, I have this idea, this problem, what do you think? And try to find other people who might have the same problem with you, and then kind of start the conversation in public. Uh, it doesn't have to go through YCZ. Uh, WebAssembly is a good example of not going through YCZ, but actually forming the community group from the get-go. So W3C also have many, many, many community groups that is gathering to discuss one ideas that they have, and you can join one of those too. So you might be confused. I mean, what are you talking about? There's so many ways to get started and so many ways to put features in the web platform. Uh, that's OK. Uh, I've been trying to figure out for two years, and I still haven't. Uh, so that's completely fine. But important thing to know, if you're confused, to land, a, to land a web platform features in web platform, there's many ways to get there, many entry points, many standard specifications, shortcuts, long ways, many ways there. So it's really hard to find like one definite path but as a web developer, you can get signal along the way. And those signals are like, look at YCZ repository and see what kind of um, uh, incubation is happening. You can subscribe to design review uh, repo in the tag and then see what kind of reviews are requested. Or in the case of Chromium, you can um, look for the intent to blah email to get the signal of what's happening. Another thing, if you are to start a conversation, regardless of venue or where it is, you need to start the conversation. You need to initiate it. 
you start documenting the problems. Again, this is not about fight, this is about coming to consensus. So describe the problem before getting jumped into solutions. And then find constituents, like get the friends and families and supporters to change, uh, to kind of gain the momentum so that you can influence the browser engineers and then change the browser's specifications. So if you all want to do this, I'm so here to help you. I'm really excited. I'm really interested in anybody who's interested in this. So if you're confused and don't know what, where to start, please, please, please ping me. And I might not have the answer, but I will find somebody who have answer. And I'm sorry at the JavaScript conference, I didn't get to how to like specify new JavaScript features, but I actually do have a Twitter site Dean on Twitter. So please do check out. And then if you have any questions, please come find me at the deep truck. Thank you very much. <laughs>